From the side of the steep and stony hill, a spout of gravel was dislodged and fell rattling and bounding through the trees. My eyes turned instinctively in that direction and I saw a figure leap with great rapidity behind the trunk of a pine. Instantly the figure reappeared, flitting from trunk to trunk, running manlike on two legs, but unlike any man that I had ever seen. I was within an ace of calling for help, but the mere fact that he was a man stopped me. Who are you? I asked. I'm poor Ben Gunnand, I haven't spoken with a Christian these three years. I could now see that he was a white man like myself and that his features were even pleasing. He was clothed with tatters of old ship's canvas and this extraordinary patchwork was all held together by a system of the most various and incongruous fastenings, brass buttons, bits of stick, and loops of tarry gaskin. Three years, I cried, were you shipwrecked? Nay, mate, said he, marooned. Marooned three years ago, he continued, and have lived on goats since then and berries and oysters. Now you, what do you call yourself, mate? He asked. Jim, I told him. And, Jim said he, looking all round him and lowering his voice to a whisper, I'm rich. I now felt sure that the poor fellow had gone crazy in his solitude. And I'll tell you what, I'll make a man of you, Jim, he continued, ah, Jim, you'll bless your stars, you will, you were the first that found me. There came suddenly a lowering shadow over his face, and he tightened his grasp upon my hand and raised a forefinger threateningly before my eyes. Now, Jim, you tell me true. That ain't Flint's ship? He asked. It's not Flint's ship, and Flint is dead, but, there are some of Flint's hands aboard, worse luck for the rest of us. Not a man, with one, leg? He gasped. John Silver? I asked. Ah, John Silver. Says he, that were his name. He's the cook, and the ringleader too, I informed him. If you were sent by John Silver, he said, I'm as good as pork, and I know it. But where was you, do you suppose? I told him the whole story of our voyage and the predicament in which we had landed. My mother and I found a map inside Billy's sea chest, which was taken to Squire Trelawney. They realized it was a map for a huge treasure that the pirate Captain Flint had buried on a distant island and Squire planned a trip with Captain Smollett and John Silver, Flint's mate, who was hired unknowingly by him. On board, I overheard Silver's plans for revolt. When we reached the island, Captain Smollett set up a plan to get the revolters to leave the ship. I sneaked into the pirate's boat and went ashore. Later I escaped from the pirates and met you. I, but you see, returned Ben Gunn, would he be likely to come down to the tune of, say one thousand pounds out of money that's as good as a man's own already? I'm sure he would, said I, as it was, all hands were to share. Why, I cried, the squires. Why, I cried, the squires a gentleman. And besides, if we got rid of the others, we should want you to help work the vessel home and he seemed very much relieved. Now, I'll tell you what, Ben said, I was on Flint's ship when he buried the treasure, he and six strong seamen. They were ashore nigh on a week, and us standing off. One fine day there he was in the six, all dead and buried. How he done it, not a man aboard us could make out. Billy Bones was the mate, Long John Silver, he was quartermaster, and they asked him where the treasure was. Ah, says he, you can go ashore, if you like, and stay, but as for the ship, She'll beat up for more, by thunder. That's what he said. Well, I was on another ship three years ago, and we sighted this island. Boys, said I, here's Flint's treasure, let's land and find it. The cabin was displeased at that, but my messmates were all of a mind and landed. Twelve days they looked for it, until one fine morning all hands went aboard. As for you, Benjamin Gunn, says A, here's a musket, a spade, and a pickaxe. You can stay here and find Flint's money for yourself. Just then, although the sun had still an hour or two to run, all the echoes of the island awoke and bellowed to the thunder of a cannon. They have begun to fight, I cried. Follow me.